Hello YouTube. So yeah, I uh, just recorded a video and I was looking back through it and I'm sadly afraid to say it was way, way too long, even for a YouTube video uh, for myself. So, but if you do like this video when you see the notification once I've uploaded it, please first of all, like it and then subscribe because at the moment I only have a measly 13 subscribers and that's hardly any at all. So it's not really good. So I was going to um, originally do um, a video on uh, the tools of magic and uh, paganism and what, you know, what to tools are and what they are used for. Uh, but I'll have to do them one tool at a time in the video uh, because there are 26 tools, at least in, in my in my usage, uh, um, in the list that I have tools. But it's going to take too long uh, as a video to do to um, put into you know for YouTube for you to watch. And it's going to be possibly quite uh, too factual. So this video is looking at um, the six, or at least what I found, six different spellings of the word magic. So what I'm going to do on my uh, on my whiteboard over there, which I will probably bring the camera, uh, you won't be able to see it for, you will be able to see me write it, but you won't be able to see it very well from the camera. Well, you, you may, you may not be able to, I, I really uh, don't know, but I'm going to try and do I'll try and do them as bright as possible, uh, colour-wise. So the first spelling I have my glasses on for is spelt as this. So I'm going to spell it, uh, just put it on the board, and then once I've, you've got used to it, uh, I will uh, move it away. And I'm going to do it in capitals, just because if I try and do it in my own joined up handwriting, uh, you... you You, you, uh, you may not be able to read my handwriting, so I, I'm going to uh, uh, do it in cap in all in capitals to make it easier. So this one, which I'm hoping you can see. If not, I will uh, try and bring the camera a bit uh, closer, which I think I may be able to do. Hang on. So yeah, uh, this spelling is the first one. It's the most commonly used one as well, which is M-A-G-I-C-K. So that one is the most commonly used uh, version of the word magic. And um, it's always been a word, it's, uh, the spelling is always the one that everybody associates with, uh, or it's just the spelling that everybody magic that we're talking about in the pagan way here, but obviously some people do not like using that spelling because it's a generic spelling, an umbrella spelling, term-wise. So other people obviously come up with a different variation of that spelling. Which brings me on to the next version of the spelling, which is very similar, but you'll see something in the back of this slightly um, uh, different. And this spelling is a little different again, and I will obviously give it to you. It's our second version of the same spell, of the same word, but it's spelled again a different way. So I hope that you can find the game. I will be um, using, of course, writing it in all the ca uh, capitals. Um, because as I said, the reason for that, obviously, as I previously said when I said about the first version of the spelling of the word magic, is uh, because my handwriting is terrible for other people to read sometimes. Not that that is ever my intention, that I don't want people to read what I've written, but obviously doing it uh, on a whiteboard like this uh, does make it much uh, more difficult uh, to, to do the spelling. So, the second spelling, uh, which again, I will bring the cam the uh, my iPad uh, to uh, the whiteboard so that you can um, oh, uh, ooh, whoops, whoops, hang on, I'm just trying to get this just right, there you go. Uh, if you can see that, I'm hoping you can all see that, but um, if you can't, then I'll just bring it a bit closer. It's M-A-G-I-C-K. Now, there are quite a few versions of the same word spelt with K in it, uh, but we'll get on to it at the end, hopefully towards... Um, the end of the video. 
Um, now I'm going to rub that out again. And I've got to go on to our third version of the same of the, of the spelling of the word. Which you, again, some of the letters uh, may change. So, uh, um, do expect there to be a, some of them will and some of them will not change. But some, uh, you may even see that maybe one may have disappeared. And this is the third version. Okay, so this version uh, is our third version of the same word, but when I bring the uh, camera on my iPad a lot closer, um, you will see that there is a slight difference the other two uh, have been spelt and a slight similarity as well so if we get it about like there whoops so as you can see with this one it's spelt m-a-g-i-k now if you remember from the second version of the, of the spelling of the word magic we spelt it the same as we did before except instead of spe uh, leaving the c at the end we added a k to it and this one is similar uh, to that, except what we've done here is we spelled it moderate, uh, mostly the same as the first one and the second one, but instead of adding a K, we've dropped the C and left the K. Uh, now there's another one like that, but again, we've dropped, we've dropped a letter or swapped it for another one. And that's our four spelling, which I'm going to go on to now. So this is our four spelling of the same word. And uh, I will tell you how it's spelled when I um, uh, get to it. And I'll bring the camera closer. Again, I'm doing it in capital letters because it allows you to uh, understand my handwriting much better. Okay, so this is our uh, fifth, sorry, fourth version of the spelling of the word magic. And. Um, it's again very, very, very different. It's, um, it's again a little bit different. Now, again with this one, as you can see, uh, some um, letters have been, now a couple of letters have been dropped and swapped. So th this one is spelled M-A-J-I-K. And what that means is that the C has been replaced again and it's not the end letter and it's been taken away and also this time the G has been swapped for a J. So we're coming on to uh, our fifth version of the spelling of the word magic, magic, uh, which is going to run with that, that again. And this time it's been, um, it's very interesting. Although some, one, some things have stayed the same uh, there is a slight difference in how it's spelled again, so um, again I'm doing it in capital letters. So um, now this one is again interesting because um, well you'll see you'll see why 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 I think it's so interesting in a spelling. And as you can see, uh, you know, uh, with this one, um, it's spelt more uh, with. Um, it's spelled M-A-J-I-C-K. So with that one, what we've done is we've spelt it as though we have with the first J, like we have when we spell it with the M-A-G-I-C spelling, except this time, like with the M-A-J-I-C where we add the K, again, we uh, we still have the um, the J swapped for the C, uh, sorry, the G, but again, we have added the K on to the end of it. And now we're going to do the sixth this is my personal favourite uh, when I'm talking about this kind of uh, the magic of the word, talking about the way that we're talking about magic in this kind of way. And as, of, as finally, I will again be doing this using capital letters.
Now this is the final way that we spell it. And as I said, this is a personal favorite of how to spell it. Uh, so it, it really is a, a personal, personal, personal favorite. And uh, now you may not be able to see it very well, but it is in yellow, but it says M-A-J-I-K. And it's spelt that way, and, and what, what, and I suspect there are probably some of you wondering, what is it about the K spellings, uh, and what's the, what, what is the reason why they're, there are the British, they're all pronounced, they're still all pronounced as the word magic, but what is it about, why have some of the versions got a K on the end? Um, so the reason why, I mean, um, that is, is because there was a self-confessed, uh, I don't think he was, a, I'm not sure if he was a witch, a wizard, or a druid, or a sorcerer, or whatever, but he was a self-confessed magician like Gerald Gardner, except he wasn't a self-confessed witch type magician. Uh, and his name was uh, Alistair Crowley. Now, he believed that the generic one, which is what everybody uses, which is M-A-G-I-C spelling, he only believed that that was not, he, he believed that that was uh, for stage magic, so illusion type magic, like, for example, um, the magician sawing his or her assistant, male or female, in half, and then putting them back together again and letting them out, you know, letting them out the box, and, um, you know, and they emerge, when they let out the box, they emerge whole. They, you know, those are, they're being, they weren't cut in half in the first place. And so he believed that uh, ritual, ceremonial, and uh, any other kind of magic in a pagan sense is what we're talking about in, like, in the last video and this video now, um, should have a K spelling to differentiate or, or distinguish or, or uh, um, to, uh, I, um, uh, well, yeah, uh, to distinguish between the two so that people would not get so uh, confused. But of course, obviously, there are some people who, even when they talk about ritual magic, ceremonial magic, and other types of magic that pagans do, like spells and that kind of thing, they also still mistakenly use the M-A-G-I-C spelling, because obviously it's a, people, it's a term and spelling of a, the word magic that people have grown up with, uh, more commonly than perhaps um, than the M-A, uh, one of the uh, K versions, of the, uh, one of the spelling which ends with the, sorry, excuse me, ends with the K spelling. Uh, so, but yeah, that's, that's the reason behind the uh, spelling of the word magic with a K. It's still pronounced the same, even if it has a J in it as well. Um, but uh, that is basically the, the reasoning behind a lot of the words spell it, of the spelling magic having a K uh, behind it instead of a C, uh, at the end instead of just a C, or you know only a, J, a K instead of a C, uh, a, a K instead of a C. So again, yes. Um, now, so this video perhaps needs to be a little bit uh, longer. Not as long as obviously perhaps maybe the previous one, but uh, I'm also going to look at um, because people do ask me about this on my pagan, on my main pagan path, and it's a question that I get asked um, quite a lot, uh, and it is, what is a wizard? Now that, and I believe to be personally honest, I always uh, felt that even I've never asked it myself. Well, I did when I was obviously you know. Um, looking at my path and stuff and, and what path I would follow and everything and that is for me a really really important really good question um so I'm gonna try and and this is what I found and what I've, I've understood and what I felt and, and found as I've been going on this path uh, what is a wizard really so to me now traditionally a man a wizard is usually um, a man gender wise traditionally speaking also um, a wizard is supposed to be um, the embodiment of wisdom. So wizards are supposed to be quite wise, and that's how the term is pronounced in the spelling way, uh, which I'm not going to go into right now. Uh, a wizard is also supposed to be um, kind, humble, uh, honest, honourable, and respectful. I mean, I sometimes struggle with maybe the honest and honourable thing, uh, sometimes personally, but I, I do try my best to be all of those uh, uh, six different things. Um, and also, finally, a wizard is supposed to be a teacher, a guide, a servant, um, a guardian, a healer, a, a mentor, 
and I suppose effectively a storyteller as well, because uh, in myths and legends there are also um, things about maybe how you're passing on knowledge, and there is a way of passing, stories are a way of uh, passing on knowledge, uh, so um, that is what a wizard is. Uh, as well, so that's a bit more information to you. I hope it's not been uh, too information over much of over um, information overload. But obviously, I'm trying to keep it. In, I'm trying to, with all these videos. I'm trying to keep them in simple layman's terms. Now, some of you have asked me what are the seven elements and where do they appear on the septogram, or people who have actually asked me about being a wizard in the past. So this little drawing here is what I'm going to show you. Now I use my septogram necklace uh, to show, to, to draw that, and then I put the elements in the position. So as you can see, air, which is the first one, starts at the top, and as you draw it, you draw it down from the bottom here to earth, and from, uh, sorry, uh, to earth, and from earth, you then draw another line up to fire. And then from fire, you draw a line down and across to metal, and from metal, you draw a line across to space, from space, you draw a line up and across to time. From time, you draw a line down and across uh, to water. And then from water, you draw a line down, up and back up to, and back up to air. And that's how you draw the septogram. And as you can see, air is at the top. Earth is just down there below. Then it comes back up to fire. And then from fire, we go to metal. From space, from metal, we go across to space. And then from space, we, we, we uh, come back up and do, uh, go back up and across to time. And from time we go down and across to water, and from water we go back up to air. And that's how, and that's where the, the uh, elements are. And then sometimes you can put a circle around the septagram, as I've shown you in the first video, uh, and that uh, symbolizes that, like with the pentacle, all the seven elements uh, working um, in harmony. So uh, that's, that's uh, really important. And if I think we have, oh, it looks like we still have plenty of time within the video. So, because uh, my CV is still going, uh, that I've got at the moment, which I'm going to show you, uh, share to you what it is. Again, it is by the company uh, called Paradise uh, Music. And this time it's called Wolf Lore. Again, by the same composer as the Merlin CD that I've got called uh, uh, Llewellyn. I won't tell you any of the tracks on this one, so I really don't think that, that, that's going to take too uh, uh, I'm going to confuse myself. So I'm going to give you uh, the genealogy of the uh, entire Greek gods and goddesses, starting at, obviously, as I said, uh, beginning with uh, Gaia or Gaia and Cro uh, Chaos or Uranus. So in the order I found on the internet, the oldest uh, titan is Oceanus, and he was the god of the seas after uh, when they came to power. Then Coas, then Cirrus, then Hyperion, the Lapitus, then Thea, the or Thea, then Rhea, then Themis, then or uh, Nemosyne, then Phoebe, then Butter, then Tethys, and Prometheus and Atlas, Chromis, and of course the uh, uh, Echidna and Typhon, and of course finally Thanatos, which is supposed to be the, uh, the, uh, a god of death, who stayed as a god of death after the defeat of the Titans. Then, obviously, uh, now uh, Kraus and Rona got married, so that gives us, of course, the genealogy of some of the type, uh, the, the early part of the Olympian pantheon. Which, of course, the first one born to them, obviously, was Hestia, then Demeter, then Hera, then Hades, then Poseidon, then Chiron, then Selene, and then Zeus. So uh, they were the early ones, but obviously, all those uh, other eight, uh, seven got swallowed whole by their father as babies, except for Zeus, because of what the uh, cup. And then from there, obviously, then after that, Zeus and Hera got together after he reborn his brothers and sisters and so on. And so we have quite a few different uh, gods. That he, uh, some of the earlier ones, the later ones, will have been born via Hera. So we start with uh, Ares. Uh, then we have Elithia and I, Eno and Apapus, Eris and Ursa and Hebe. And that's it. And then we have uh, Zeus's union with Europa, which is Minos and Rahadmanthus, or Radamanthus. Then it's uh, Zeus and Leto, which is Apollo and Artemis. Uh, then we have the union of Zeus and Melis, or Metis, which uh, uh, gives us Athena. 
Benzusalcinini, which is which gave birth to Dionysus and Candia. Then Zeus and Demeter, which gave us Persephone, and of course, and then the next one after that is Zeus and Dione, which gave us Aphrodite. Uh, and then we have a union of Zeus and Eriamone, or known, Erinone, Yure, 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 uh, Aglia, Euphoria, Euphorini, and that's it. And then we have Zeus and Themis. Which is two, uh, we have three, we have six of them, but we have three of each type. So the Hore, which are Thurus, Euphori, uh, and Orth Orthosy, and then the More, or the Moire, which are known, also known as the Fates, and we have, of course, Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropos. And then obviously Zeus and a Titaness, which is a uh, Nemeos theme, which we get uh, Calliope, Cleo, Ereto, Euterpe, Melonene, and Polypyrnia, and then Terpso. Uh, which gave us, of course, the Muses, which is what we're uh, talking about now. Then Tripsychor, sorry, Terpsichor, uh, Thalia, and Uranea. Or Uranea. Then Zeus and Danai, which, of course, gives us Perseus, the heart, the uh, first of the, uh, uh, for the first of many demigods and goddesses. And then Zeus and Alchemini, which, of course, gives us Heracles, uh, but really what actually happened was Harry actually possessed her, but did she, Zeus did not know. So I think just Zeus on his home, Lolite, I don't know how you, uh, what that, I'm not sure exactly what it comes And obviously Zeus and Aegina, which gave us Aeacus, or however you pronounce it, because I have no idea, but the spelling is difficult. Then Zeus and Leda, which gave, gave us Helen of Troy, so she was a demi goddess. Uh, and then we have Zeus and Maya, or Maya, which gave us Hermes. And then from there, some of them, as I said, have had children of their own. So Hades and uh, Dryo gave us Pan. He's still first in my heart. Then we have Her uh, Hermes and Aphrodite, so that gave us Hermaphroditus. Then we have Hermes and Opus, who gave us Endurus. Hermes and Sione, who gave us Auto uh, Selectus. And then Hermes and Polymeli, which gave us Eudra Doris, then Hermes on his own, which gave us Angelia, and Hermes and Myrta, which gave us Myrtilus. Uh, and then Aphrodite had some other uh, children born of other gods and goddesses. So her with Aphrodite, uh, Ares, gave us Eros, Phobos, Demos, or Deimos, however you pronounce it, uh, Harmonia, Paphos, Anteros, and Hymnus. And then we've got Aphrodite and Hermes again, which I've already spoken about with Hermes, which is, of course, which gave birth again to the Hermaphroditus. And then we've also got uh, Aphrodite and Poseidon, which gave us Rhodos and Eryx. Then Aphrodite and Dionysus, which gave us Pitha, uh, Peep and the Graces and Priapha, Priapus. Then Aphrodite and uh, Anchises, which gave us uh, a Anus or Enus or something like Enus. And then from there we have obviously, and then Pan had some children as well, uh, which is Selenos, Lynx, and Protos. So, yes, uh, Zeus got to have uh, some grand, Zeus and Hera, and well, Zeus and mainly, mainly Zeus uh, also got to have some, not only children, but grandchildren. Uh, but, you know, the grandchildren didn't attempt to do certain children, and the children did not do them to attempt to do certain the grandparents either. So, yeah, but, uh, that would be, the Moonkin Panda has got better than the Titans, and of course, uh, the, um, the, well, and of course, obviously, was better than the Titans, and of course, was better than perhaps uh, Gaia or Gaia. And Uranus or Chaos. So um, there you are. So that that's that. Um, 
I feel like I should probably make this video still a little bit uh, longer, but if I make if I ca if, if I make it too long, uh, I think people may dislike it a lot more. More people are going to dislike it. I'm hoping that people are going to still um, like this one, but I'm hoping everything I've given you uh, captured down. I hope I managed to um, lighten the last one. Try and keep it layman's terms. Keep you know uh, layman's terms and uh, keep it to the basics, uh, really. And like that Australian or New Zealand lady uh, that also apparently uh, made, has lived and made was living in Thailand again for one of her videos. Um, I do forget her name, not intentionally, but she's a guy, as I said in my first video about paganism and stuff like that. Uh, um, uh, well, I suppose, you know, um, she did uh, do a video where she channels uh, Pan's energy, so. What I'm going to do at, uh, in perhaps maybe uh, the, the next uh, video is channel each of the different uh, gods and goddesses of uh, Greek, uh, ancient Greeks, which includes the Titans and of course uh, Gaia or Gaia and Chaos or Uranus. Um, so I'm going to see what happens as there. Uh, I'm just going to channel uh, most, not them, what them personally, and draw on their energies. Uh, so I may actually uh, use one of my statues or my personal representation of that. So they may, I may do it in my uh, uh, bedroom, which is where my personal altar is, or I may do it at a slightly smaller altar. I may take the statue to a smaller altar in my kitchen and uh, um, uh, use uh, those. Um, but I, I really don't. Really, uh, have no, I don't really know at the moment um, uh, how that channel is. Uh, sorry, how that, how those videos will uh, progress. Hopefully, at some point, I'm going to also, uh, um, in between channeling each of the different gods or goddesses, I also would like to, if you want, uh, well, I'd hopefully also like to, for all of you, do uh, some videos on the different tools. And obviously in some of the other videos, uh, oh, well I've got the time I think in this video, I'm also going to uh, go into the other uh, room. Which means I'll have to turn the music up, so excuse me for a minute while I go quiet. me to do is still do uh, the video and um, uh, yeah it still allows me to do the video and all of you guys as well as including as well as including myself oh shoot that's not good that's not good that's good Um, so, um, yes, it still allows you to, uh, all of us to hear the music, obviously you guys hear it in the background whilst, uh, uh, once when you watch this video, and obviously me to hear it in the background and still for you to be able to hear my voice and still hear me talk on the video as I need to do this. Um, so, first of all, uh, as I said in the first video, I will also want to tell you about why I do not uh, cast or draw circles when uh, I do magic. And the reason why um, that is, is because, firstly, I mean, there's a lot of things around me, personally, uh, that are cir uh, circular shapes, so like uh, key rings. Uh, so for example, one of my representations on my personal altar here in the bedroom is a sun, and it's shaped, uh, the outside part of it is very circular shaped, as is the actual uh, key ring that it's uh, supposed to be. Um, again, as you saw from my goblet as well, uh, the shape of it is very circular, as as, as you can uh, um, see. So, yeah, I mean, I know it's the green man, and I, I, I won't go into the deep... Uh, but I may do a video on that if you wish me to, and maybe even at some point channel his energy, although I don't know. I do not believe him to be a god. I believe him to be a spirit, but, I, you know, if, if you uh, like his energy and you like uh, the myth or, or the legend um, of the green man, I can, I can channel him too. Um, if, if you wish. Uh, also, I've got a lot, and I've got a lot of things that, as I said, are circular shapes. So, you know, uh, crystal balls, um, 
a watch, you know, the watch strap on my wrist and the actual watch face itself, which is again cir uh, uh, circular. So, um, but uh, some coins are on my uh, altar that you can't see at the moment that are uh, dragon and They're copper, but they're in little special uh, things. Like some of the shapes of the, the uh, handles of the wood for the wands and the staffs are very circular shaped. Um, uh, which which you've, you've, seen, uh, uh, you've seen on the first video, uh, I have a septogram on my wall, which has a circle around it. So uh, sometimes I use that and actually draw the septogram and the septical... Uh, whoops, that, that, that's really good, that is. That's, that's a really good thing for me, for me to do. Just drop my iPad and damage it. Lovely, yeah, great, good fun and knock some things off my altar and probably damage some other things as well in the bloody process, which I'm not too happy about myself doing that. Now I'm, I'm kind of a bit, a bit cross with myself. So uh, give me a bit of a time to uh, readjust a minute. <clears throat> so uh, yes, uh, as you can see, there's the uh, septicle or septogram in a circle. And as you can see, the outer ring is a circle. So although it's also got the septogram in there, again, uh, and obviously the button to stop me recording, the outer bit is a circle again. Um, so that's a square, it's got a circle around it. And obviously, as you can see from my curved pointy wizard's hands, the brims are circular. So in that pack, the whole hat is a cone, which is a circle. So um, I've got two of those. Uh, but this one's a more, uh, more neutral one, because it's gray. This one is a, a one I got a while ago, but it's, um, Again, it's still got the brim, which is circular, so very important to obviously keep that. Again, it goes up in a cone and then it curves, curves around to the edge. It's got some stars on it, which is part of my magical name, but I'm not, that's all I'm telling you. But I'm not only telling you that little bit of, little bit of information about me. And again, the cauldron, as you saw earlier, that is also circular. So, it has, so there are plenty of images of uh, circles around me. Uh, that I feel that I do not actually need to draw or cast a circle. I mean, I even I mean, some people uh, don't draw or actually cast a circle. They they uh, visualize it. You know, they, they uh, close their eyes and they imagine uh, a circle um, around their, them where they're, and where they're doing their magic too. So I mean, for me. Symbolism is useful for uh, visualization as well. So, so I feel that, um, and I still feel the same way as I did when I referred to it. That really, it is it. It's not actually necessary to draw uh, or cast, as some people call it, a circle. But it's just a you know drawing or um, you know uh, taking some salt or some sugar or something that, um, and putting a circle around you and your body, you know, around your body and the area you're doing, your, uh, doing the magic in. Chalk or drawing a chalk circle, maybe. So yeah, um, but personally, I do not really uh, uh, see the, the the need to do something which for me feels a bit. And I hope people will not take this the wrong way when I say this, but um, feels a bit willy nilly, a bit silly to be drawing something that is not needed if I already have the image re uh, around me. So that's just my personal uh, preference. Again, it's up to you uh, if you want to draw or cast a circle. I do that because I'm saying speech because I don't like the word cast in that sense. Uh, but it's a, lot, a lot of pagans use that term to when they mean to draw or, or create or uh, uh, put a circle around them. It's something to do with protection, but I feel that personally I do not need uh, to do it. And I do do other things for protection I feel very important. I mean, that's why, you know, I wear a septogram, uh, as you, those of you who've seen my first video uh, will know. So again, I mean, it's got a sort of circle in the middle part as it's been, uh, the way, because of the way it's been drawn. What's holding it there uh, is a, a smaller circle and then another circle to hold onto my chain. And obviously, for again, for protection, because dragons are supposed to be ferocious and very protective, uh, and uh, I, I do wear uh, dragon necklaces. I have dragons in and around my altar and in and around my home so there's one uh, upon um, I'll, I'll try and show it to you again without dropping my iPad this time on the wall there that's uh, a fairy or an elf lady who's uh, holding the dragon uh, in um, something like um, water or, or something like 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 that again there's dragon imagery right over there uh, if you can uh, see it that's an Asian dragon 
And again, I have also um, a dream capture on my wall. I know it should be actually deadly directly above my actual bed where my head sleeps, but I felt that was that was the best place to put that. Uh, and I've got other dragon imagery around me in my bedroom as well. So if you can uh, see my two little lovely little uh, teddy bears here, which is obviously some of the, some of you may recognise the black one, which is of course Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. And the little green one is a hand-knitted one that I would, um, they were going to chuck out in a charity shop when I used to volunteer there, and I thought it was too cute to um, um, take away, uh, you know, not to, to have, and I, I felt I should give him a home. And I recently got this in Glastonbury in a town, not in a shop, and it's a dragon uh, skull. So, uh... So... Um, yeah, there, uh, um, and uh, I thought, you know, I had to uh, have it. And before that, uh, I also brought a statue of, which is supposed to be the white dragon, um, but uh, it's a bit, too, personally for me, it's a bit too pink and a bit too uh, um, uh, silvery. I suppose uh, for me but um, again you know it was beautiful and I was uh, drawn to it uh, because the owner of the shop called Wildwood in Glastonbury uh, said about it and I, I you know I wanted something to do with dragons and, and particularly the white uh, dragons so um, yeah but I mean, it's a beautiful statue and I, I you know my, I, I out of all dragons and the dragon uh, mythologies and that uh, the white dragon is um, Strangely enough, um, uh, my favourite. Now, again, as you saw on the personal altar, I do also have, although it's a white wolf, it is a wolf. And again, although the wolf is like a, um, you know, um, pack animal. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll bring the uh, camera uh, closer for, for uh, this little uh, close-up shot here. Uh, there we go. Oh, no, we're, around, we're around the wrong way a little bit. Oh, I'll have to go over his head a little bit then. Oh, 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 that's a bit too much. Uh, and again, if I can get him in shot again, it's going to be very difficult to do. The other side. Uh, well, I can probably try and do it from 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 this side. Where the Pemeskis little devil is. There, well, there we go. So yes, and he, although he's pure white, again, a wolf is not only, uh, especially a parent, you know, uh, wolf parents of uh, with their cubs. Uh, male, male uh, the father wolf or the alpha male and even the uh, the mother the wolf who's the, the, the she wolf they are very protective of their uh, cubs so uh, again that feels uh, it's a symbol I feel that I uh, connected not just for Odin and but uh, sometimes apparently one of the familiars of uh, Zeus is a wolf um, as well again another I also like her because she has an animal that I like, which is one of her familiars, which is a peacock, whether it may be white peacocks or uh, the traditional kind of bluey, greeny, goldy, feathered, uh, tail-typed kind of um, uh, peacocks. But some people tend to, when it comes to drawing the mythical bird, the phoenix, some people tend to draw them as a kind of um, phoenix, uh, sorry, a, a, a peacock, which they're not really. Um, some people tend to draw them as a, as a, as a sort of um, similar, bit, similar to like a griffin or a hippogriff. And some people tend to draw them a bit more like an eagle. So I'm not really sure which kind of bird is the right appropriate kind of bird to imagine as a phoenix. Uh, so again, uh, because I mean, well, peacocks aren't supposed to be able to fly. Oh, 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 I don't think peacocks can fly, but some people used to think they could not fly. So I felt, uh, I mean, I, I will see what happens if I ever see a phoenix myself uh, that's right or feels right, then I will use that as a representation for a phoenix. Uh, I have other magical creatures that are represented on my uh, altar besides a pegasus, but there's a unicorn there. Um, uh, said I've got some um, other things as well, some, uh, I've got an alien sort of keyring thing, but I felt that was something to do with maybe if there is life on other planets. I'm not saying there is not, and I'm not saying there is, but if there is, then, you know, that will allow me to connect to them and maybe be friendly to them, I hope. 
Maybe I'd like to plant the plants. We just, you know, our science is not, uh, human science is as yet not that evolved, uh, advanced enough to uh, um, uh, answer that question, whether there is or is not life on our planet. We have started looking and apparently there is, they have found evidence that there is uh, water on uh, the planet Mars. Uh, so, yes, it's possible there might be life on Oh, excuse me, on another planet. Crikey, it is ten past midnight already, so I'm quite tired anyway because I've been up for most of the day. And I've been up earlier today than I normally am during the week, so that's quite a shocker. Um, I think what else I can uh, tell you, really, um, uh, well, uh, so, yeah, um, I've shown you the altars, um, I'm not going to channel a particular god or goddess, uh, tonight, many of them that I use, particularly as I said, I use the entire Greek, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, ancient Greek ones, so all of them, including Chaos, Gaia or Gaia, uh, and then obviously the Titans as well, uh, some less than others, perhaps, um, and obviously the main Greek ones from Zeus onwards. Uh, so, but um, yes, um, obviously that also includes Ganymede, who, according to myth and legend, became Zeus's not only homosexual lover, but his uh, cupbearer after Dionysus. But that, those are again, like with Pan, even Pan's tale, they're fascinating and wonderful and sweet and very sad in places. Um, are fascinating tales to tell. As I said, wizards are storytellers, so yes. And I do have another spiritual path that I am um, developing at the moment. Uh, I, won't, I will not tell you too much more about it uh, right now, uh, but it has some, what I, what I will tell you is it has something to do uh, with dragons. So it's kind of, it, it's part of, well, it, it's kind of part of, in a sense, uh, wizard, the wizardry side of it, but not so much. Uh, but it is a more spiritual based path, and it does, it does allow you to do magic and uh, be whatever you want uh, uh, spiritually, but um, on, a, on a magic and other scale uh, kind of thing. Uh, but it also um, is more of a spiritual path in the sense that it will uh, focus you and use the dragons to help you spiritually. Not necessarily magically, but certainly uh, spiritually. And also, uh, if you have seen my profile pictures and my profile on Grindr or Grindr, which are dating apps for gay, bisexual, and transgender men, women, and curious uh, straight guys perhaps, um, and you're between 18 to uh, thir 39, then although I am not a sexual escort, I do offer uh, spiritual healing, but I will charge for it. And again, I also offer a companionship if you're just a bit a wee bit lonely, uh, but I will decide on the prices if you wish to contact me, but only contact me through, uh, contact me through Grindr or Hornet if you want that kind of thing. But I am, as I said, I am not an escort who does sex, I'm afraid. I'm, I, that is nothing, I do not offer sexual services. I'm sorry, but that's not the offer services that I offer. I'm not putting that, I'm not saying, uh, you know, I'm not trying to put this on, I'm not uh, doing anything about sex on uh, uh, YouTube here, and I'm not trying to advertise, you know, I'm, as I'm saying, I'm not, I am not uh, an escort in that way. I am, I'm going to have around someone who does offer uh, spiritual healing, and uh, I also offer companionship if you're, if you need it. But, you know, uh, I do not offer sexual services of any sort, including sexual intercourse itself. Uh, there are really personal reasons why I do that, and if you ask me, I may tell you, I may not. It depends on my mood uh, when you ask. But, um, I think uh, that is everything I have can feel, uh, well, I say I can cover uh, today. Um, some of the other videos I may do will cover uh, meditation and what we call grounding uh, and how to maybe um, do those. Uh, also how to bless the work that you're doing. So if you're doing videos like this and spiritual healing and, um, and any sort of magical working, 
What I believe you should always do is at any altar, even if you have just a small one or the one like what I have at the moment where I'm getting down to, so you won't see my full face at the minute. And I do really genuinely apologize for that, but it's just the way where I, it's just where I put my iPad at the minute. So you can still kind of see my face, but what I believe you should do is um, uh, take an incense stick uh, uh, and uh, put it in your incense uh, burner. For example, this one, this one I'm using is called uh, Pagan Magic. I know it's got a pentacle on there and it's not the same thing I believe in. Uh, but it, it, you know, it's just like, it just like, I mean, I was drawn to it because obviously I like the name. There is another one that you may not like. You may think I'm a bit crazy to use, uh, but I won't go into that one. But well, uh, this is the one I'm using uh, on this altar um, at the moment. I'm just going to, uh, wherever they are get my matches uh, to light the incense stick. Just, uh, oh, they're there, they're behind. They're behind my iPad, of course they are. So these are really cool because they're extra long matches and they are safety matches. So you've got a bit of uh, uh, leeway when it comes to lighting them. So take your match like this, turn it that way because this bit is the head where you want to light. So you, so you take, have it like this and you do it like that. So that you strike it and it should light. And then you put it underneath the incense stick Wait for the flame to develop on the incense stick, which I will show you now. Once the, you have the incense lit with a flame on it, obviously blow the match out. You don't want to, once you've lit the incense stick, you don't want it to uh, stay. Now, as you can see, the incense stick does have a flame on it. So then gently, if you can, uh, blow it out. And as you can see, there's still uh, heat there but that will all burn down and fall into the uh, tray part of the uh, incense burner. The inner uh, tray part, uh, which I wish you could see, but you uh, can't. But anyway, there is, and again, I'm gonna lighten the incense in the other room and the other altar, because although I already have representations of the gods and goddesses, uh, um, I should always um, uh, do, you know, uh, oh, you can't, oh, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you know, I should always um, uh, use both altars, really, uh, because uh, to me, it's, um, excuse me for a minute, I it's, it's very important to uh, do that. So yes, as I said, when you choose an incense, and I've got three in the cupboard, which are, I will show you now. This one is called uh, um, Mother Earth. Sorry, it's probably around the wrong way for, for, for everybody, but, uh, well, anyway, Mother Earth, uh, which is what I'm gonna use now. There's another one that I've got called uh, Pagan Spell. Again, it's got a crystal ball on the front with uh, someone's hand over it, no, no, but in the crystal ball it has got a uh, pentacle. Uh, so yeah, this is called uh, uh, Pagan Spell. And the other one I've got, which is uh, um, called Dragon's Blood. Now this is an instance I've, I've used uh, many times uh, uh, um, before, uh, which is, is really cool. And as you can see, this particular version of it has um, a, a, a dragon on the uh, packaging. S uh, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, there we are. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked because uh, we need to uh, um, do this. Now, when it comes to lighting matches, always, uh, always light them um, uh, away from you, and then you just uh, uh, um, so anyway, put your incense stick again in the little hole in the in the holder, which you can't see, but I, I've got it there. Make sure that you're gonna make sure that when you put the incense in the holder, that uh, the incense is going to when the incense starts burning, the incense uh, starts burning, it is going to drop into the holder. Again, take your matches in your. Know, if you have, whoops, if you uh, have matches, of course, I, I do, but uh, some people may have lighters. Uh, it doesn't really matter. 
Again, like your your uh, match. So you can see the flame there and then bring it up to your incense stick, light it, and make sure there's a good flame on the incense stick uh, before you um, uh, before you blow out the incense stick. Then, as, well, as you can see, that's got a good flame to it. So let's blow it out. And um, it will start dripping into the bottom here and make the ashes uh, fall in there. It'll be absolutely fine. So as you can see, I've again, I've got, uh, oops, I nearly lost him. There's my spiritual father as, as another statue of him, as Zeus, uh, which is Zeus. You may not just see the name on there clearly, but if I were to uh, move a bit bit closer, perhaps you could maybe uh, see it. Maybe I, I don't know. But anyway, you, you know who that is. And of course, we've got obviously my dear darling, uh, if I can get him in, uh, Pan. So here's Pan. And then obviously, as, I, as you know, that, that is the uh, dragon incense uh, burner there. There's a few other things as you uh, saw, uh, as you saw in the other parts of the video there, uh, which of course uh, is the, uh, which uh, is the, of course, the conquer and a little bit more about Zeus and uh, uh, previously a, a jewelry box. And you can, now you can, uh, behind me, there's this beautiful uh, cooking apron, which uh, is for, obviously, as we're in a kitchen. And I don't know if you can see this properly, but if I move my arm a bit, uh, if I can, it is, the. it's supposed to be, um, I know the music stopped, but it's supposed to be the green man. Oh, so uh, yeah, I think that's, again, that's appropriate for cooking. And when I'm doing cooking in here and, you know, any sort of cooking, even if it is a, a potion brewing or whatever, um, that is going to allow me to still do kitchen magic and any kind of thing like that in the kitchen to bless the food uh, and drink and whatever else I'm doing is kitchen work. Even if it's cleaning the kitchen and uh, doing other household uh, tasks that are such as, you know, cleaning my cutlery and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yes. Um, and that really is it really about altar. And uh, that's it really, I suppose, because I want the, um, um, but yeah, in the next uh, couple of videos, I'm hoping, as I said, to do some god and goddess channeling of different gods and goddesses from the entire Greek, uh, the uh, what the ancient Greeks would have believed in, from uh, Gaia or Gaia and Chaos and Uranus to Zeus and so on. Uh, and then I'm hopefully also going to then in between though each of when I channel each one of them, uh, I'll do a god then a goddess and whoever's last in the pantheon in my uh, list or lists plural. Uh, and then I'm going to. Um, Although I will tell you that, well, I will, I'll tell you when I channel each one of them, but uh, also I'm going to then in between each channeling video, hopefully also do uh, um, some videos on the different altar, uh, the different tools of uh, particularly magic, particularly wizardry, but uh, mainly the t uh, tools of magic. And um, hopefully, um, again, um, that'll be, uh, yeah. Uh, but it will obviously, it, they probably will be each, cha all the other videos of the channeling and the um, in-between videos, which of course, as I said, will be tools on magic for now. Uh, they will hopefully be a bit shorter than this one and the uh, thirst one, because this is almost, this has been going on a bit longer than the last one. I know the music has stopped, but uh, yeah, anyway, so as the music has now stopped, the subjects have uh, kind of um, come to an end. So blessings to all of you, um, whatever uh, power, higher powers you or power you believe in and thank you um for watching the video please like and subscribe to the channel because it allows the channel to grow and i can do uh more videos not just uh, these videos but the uh, uh the other characters you've seen on the videos that i've mentioned in the first uh, the uh, uh, the other characters that you've seen on the channel do other videos um uh they have obviously of course have uh you know, they need, uh, I know some of my, my 13 subscribers, they will know those characters and, uh, but I can also do uh, videos of their, of those characters as well, uh, which will be some other in-between videos, but they won't be anything like this. But I hope you uh, again enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, please again, like and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. And if you already have subscribed, you know to, you already know to like the button, uh, you know there's a big thumbs up button, which is a kind of like, do not give it a, one of those, because I, will find that rather negative. I want positivity and uh, so a nice good one of, you know, uh, 
you can only like up to once, but you know, if you all press these buttons, that would be great. And if you can, um, and if you comment as well, there, keep, please keep them nice and positive. No, no negativity whatsoever. Even if you have um, a, perhaps a constructive criticism, I don't want any criticism of any sort. Uh, I just want, um, not your opinions, all I want is that you, you know, um, to say that I, you think I'm doing maybe quite well uh, and suggestions as to what maybe the next videos after the channeling and uh, tools videos, uh, pagan based videos should um, um, be because that would be really helpful. So thank you. And I will have to say good night because I'm doing this at night time. So, yeah. And blessings to each and every one of you.